I couldn't believe it. The big iron gate was open. I walked to it and stood there. Stood on the edge of two worlds. The one behind me was the only one I really knew. But the world beyond the gate was the world of other people. If I entered it, what would he do? What would be my punishment? You'll hear my story as you listen to The Captive Spirit on Theater 5. <laughs> my daughter back, Mr. Prescott. I don't care how many men you have to hire or how much it costs, I want her back. Ah, uh, Mr. Bishop, you say her name is Caroline. That's right, yes. And, uh, what about this photograph? Uh, it's the perfect likeness. When was this picture taken? Uh, a few months ago. Uh-huh. Mr. Bishop, how old is your daughter? I don't see what that has to do with it. Well, I mean, if she's still a minor, then legally... Legally? What does the law know about these things? Besides, you're a private investigator, aren't you? Well, I'm afraid you may have the wrong idea about private investigators, Mr. Bishop. We don't work against the law. Well, I'm not asking you to break any laws, Mr. Prescott. My daughter is missing. I simply want you to find her and bring her back to me. Did she leave this house of her own accord, or did she run away with some guy? No, no. Carolyn doesn't know any men. She could have met a young man at school. No, she has never gone to school. It was her mother's wish that she be educated here at home. I see. Uh, that uh, oil painting on the wall. Oh, that's Carolyn's mother, my wife. She's a very beautiful woman. Yes, she passed away when Carolyn was only seven. Oh. Hey, Mr. Bishop, how long has your daughter been missing? Uh, I noticed that she was gone about seven this morning. It's only five hours ago, not very long. She might have... Now, now, Mr. Prescott, I would hardly have asked you to drive here from the city if I weren't quite sure that my daughter is missing. She took a suitcase and some clothing with her. Have you uh, considered the possibility of kidnapping? Oh, I'm sure she wasn't kidnapped. Oh, then in your opinion, she ran away. Yes. You seem quite definite about that. Mr. Prescott, this isn't the first... Oh. Oh, it's happened before. Yes. How often? I... I fail to see why all these questions are necessary. Mr. Bishop, if I'm to look for your daughter, it certainly won't do any harm to learn all I can. But while you're asking these questions, heaven knows what may be happening to her. Why didn't you bring the police into this? Because I'd like to avoid gossip and publicity. Also, I I want this to be handled discreetly. I've always shunned notoriety of any kind. As for Caroline, she's lived a very sheltered life, a very happy, peaceful life. Oh, did you notice the garden as you drove past? I, yeah, I was quite impressed by it. It's Carolyn's garden. Mr. Prescott, tell me, could a garden that beautiful be tended by an unhappy girl? Now, look, Mr. Bishop, I didn't say I thought she was unhappy. No, but but you suggested it. At least you gave me that impression. Well, I didn't mean to. I'm just trying to find out all I can about your daughter. All you need to know is that she's missing and that I want her back desperately. Mr. Bishop, if I find your daughter and she refuses to come back, I'd have to let it go at that. I couldn't force her to do something against her wishes. Why didn't you tell me this when I spoke to you on the phone? Because you told me that your little girl was missing. I assumed she was a child. Well, perhaps if I were to offer you a sizable bonus... No, no, would... no. Mr. Prescott, what are your conditions? Well, if I find your daughter, I'll tell her that you're most anxious to have her back. And if she says she won't return? I'll contact you and give you all the information I have. Including the address where she's staying? If I have that information, yeah. But understand this, Mr. Bishop. Yes? The moment she tells me she doesn't want to return to you, that's when I drop the case. Now, if those conditions aren't satisfactory... Well, you leave me no alternative. Too much time has been lost already. All right, Mr. Prescott, I accept your conditions. But for the love of heaven, get moving. <laughs> Tickets. Tickets, please. All right, miss. Hmm? Oh, I beg your pardon. Ticket, please. Oh, yes. Uh, well, the young lady's looking for her ticket conductor. Here's mine. There you are, sir. Thank you. Miss? I, uh... Is something wrong? Oh, I don't have a ticket. Did you lose it? No. 
And if it's any help, Conductor, I saw the young lady board the train at the last stop. Yes, that was Baysville. Where are you going, miss? To the city. I'll have to collect your fare. Let's see, Baysville to the city, that'll be $2.75. Oh. Mm-hmm. $2.75, please. Oh, yes, I, I, uh, I have some money. Ah, silver dollars, huh? Here you are. I'll have to give you some change. A quarter. Here you are. Thank you. Tickets. Tickets, please. <clears throat> I did that myself once. Oh, were you speaking to me? Yes, I uh, said I did that myself once. Oh. Got on the train without a ticket, I mean. I forgot about the ticket. Yes, you uh, seemed to be in quite a hurry when you boarded the train. I uh, couldn't help noticing I was looking through the window. Uh, my name's Jeff Tanner, by the way. Oh, I'm uh, Caroline Bishop. I'm happy to know you. So you're going to the city, huh? Yes. Yeah, so am I. Oh, do you live in the city? Well, I was born and raised there. Oh, please tell me about it. Haven't you ever been there? No, but I've heard my... I've heard my people talk about it. And I've always wanted to go to the city. It must be very exciting. Sometimes. I guess it's like most big cities. Just don't expect too much, and maybe you won't be disappointed. Hmm. Uh, incidentally, I... Uh, I know it's none of my business, but... Uh, yes? Those silver dollars in your purse. Oh. You don't uh, often see silver dollars in this part of the country. You must have 50 of them. 63. That is, there were 63 before I paid my fare. I've been saving them. My father... I received a dollar each week for tending the garden. <laughs> well, I know of easier ways to get rich. Well, it was just that... No, I know. Look, uh... You mustn't pay too much attention to what I say. I'm always making something out of nothing. That's my business. Your business? I'm a journalist. Oh. Uh, some people are kind enough to call me a political expert. My. As a matter of fact, I've just been to the state capitol. Huh? I'm doing a series of articles on the Senate. Your work must be very exciting. Oh, every now and then. But for the most part, it's a pretty boring business. Uh, Caroline... Now, I'm going to ask a question that's absolutely none of my business. But, uh, will you be staying with friends or relatives in the city? No. Well, then you've made a reservation at a hotel? Well, no. I haven't made any plans. Well, I'm glad I asked. You see, this is the convention season, and every room in the better-known hotels has been booked. And some of the hotels that have available rooms, well... Well, they're not the kind of places I'd recommend to a girl like you, believe me. Well, what can I do? If you'll let me, I'd like to help. Oh, you are being very kind to me. And I'm grateful. The fact is, I know a manager of a very nice little hotel that's only a short distance from the train station. I'm sure you're going to like it. <laughs> It's a beautiful room. Thank you so much. Oh, well, not at all. I uh, guess you're tired, huh? Well, yes, I am. Uh, then I'll leave in just a moment. But uh, I was wondering... Uh, yes? You see, as an employed journalist, I have a certain amount of influence in this town. I, uh, just enough influence to get two tickets for the musical comedy at the Majestic Theater. It's uh, sold out for almost a year in advance. Oh, well, anyway, I was thinking uh, after you rest, maybe you'd like to see it with me. Oh, I... Of course, uh, if you'd rather not, I'll understand. Oh, no. No, Jeff, I I'd, I'd love to go. Well, fine. And uh, maybe, if you like, we could have dinner before the show. That'd be very nice. Oh, great. Uh, pick you up at seven? All right. <laughs> have a good rest, Caroline. So glad you enjoyed the show. Oh, I didn't think it was possible to laugh so much. And I didn't think laughter could sound so wonderful. <laughs> My, it's been a perfect evening. Dinner and the show, and 
And now this lovely little place. You know something? Tonight, for the first time in my life, I really like this city. Oh, Jeff. No, I mean, I really like it. I, I even like the people. Oh. <laughs> Carolyn, well, I don't know how long you're going to stay here, but please, don't leave without giving me fair warning, huh? Jeff. How long are you staying? Please, don't let's talk about that. But it's very important to me. I, I, I mean that. Let's just think of now. <gasps> Jeff. What is it? Carolyn, what's wrong? Jeff. Jeff. She's trembling. <laughs> That man near the door. Well, what about him? He's staring at me. Oh, Jeff, I'm afraid. Do you know that man? No. Well, then why should you be afraid of him? I don't know. I... Jeff, he's coming this way. It's all right, Caroline. Now, look, there's no need to get excited about this. No one's going to get excited, not if you just move along and mind your own business. I only want to have a few words with a young lady. Who are you and exactly what do you want? Now, make it quick. All right, I was hired by this girl's father. Jeff, please, me. take me out of here. No, I'm out of his bishop. Don't touch me. I only want... My arm! Let go of her. As soon as I've said my piece... Jeff! I said let go of her. Now, look here, young man. All right, you... Come on, Caroline, let's get out of here. No, it's all right, Caroline. It's all right. You're safe now. That man. My father sent him. Oh, Jeff, I don't want to go back. Don't let them take me back, please. Now, you don't have to go anywhere you don't want to go. But you don't know my father. He never gives up. I was a prisoner in that big house. There were always walls around me. And then... And someone made a mistake. And the gate was left open. I didn't dare believe it. I thought that if I looked again, the gate would be locked. I packed some things and took the money I saved. And I went back to the gate and it was still open. Oh. You can't imagine how it felt to be able to leave that place. Caroline... Why did your father do this to you? He didn't want me to see the outside world. I remember once he said the world was cruel, and so were the people in it. He said his duty was to protect me from the world. Oh, no normal man acts like that. He isn't an ordinary man, Jeff. He always gets what he wants. No, not this time. Oh. Oh, you're so good to me. Because I care for you. Oh, Jeff. Well, why do you turn away? Caroline, what is it? I'm afraid. Afraid of my love? Of my father. You just don't know him. Well, now, look. He's a man. Not some kind of untouchable god. Just a man. Now, all we have to do is go to the police. No, and... you said you'd look after me. I will. Well, then take me away. Jeff, take me someplace where my father will never find me. Caroline, that won't solve anything. All I want is peace, can't you see? Don't you understand? I'm trying to. You don't know how it was. No one can know how it was. Now, darling, trust me. Believe me when I say that I won't let anything happen to you. I love you. Then take me away, Jeff. If you don't, I'll go by myself. I'm sorry, Jeff, but I mean it. Try to understand. I don't want to lose you, but I'm so afraid. There's something that you're keeping from me. I don't know what you mean. Why are you so terribly afraid of your father? I told you he kept me a prisoner. Look, it has to go a lot deeper than that. Please don't ask me any more questions. I've got to. Now, darling, I want to help you, but I can't fight something unless I know what I'm fighting against. Now, if you've done something wrong, tell me. No. I, I don't care what it is, I'll stand by you. I haven't done anything, except to run away. Why? What did you run away from? Please don't ask me now. Please, not now, Jeff. Then you will tell me? 
Yes. I promise that you'll know everything. When? Soon. Oh, so you're the young man. Thank you for coming to see me. Uh, what's your name, please? Didn't your private detective tell you? He's no longer working for me. He said you refused my offer of $1,000. That's right. Oh, the young idealist, eh? You can't be reached with money, or perhaps I haven't gone high enough. You're an old man, Mr. Bishop, so I'll forget you said that. Tell me something, Mr. Uh, uh, you know, a man as tough and as brave as you are shouldn't be afraid to give me his name. It's Jeffrey Tanner. All right, Mr. Tanner, let's not waste any more time. Exactly what do you want, or should I say how much? I came here expecting to dislike you, Mr. Bishop. I haven't been disappointed. Where is my daughter? Now, that's something I'm not prepared to tell you. How much money do you want, Mr. Tanner? Don't, don't bother bothering with me. Just tell me how much. I think you really believe I came here to get some money from you. There's nothing else for me to believe. Well, have you considered the possibility that I might be in love with Caroline? In love? Or have you gone so sour on the world that you don't believe such a thing could happen? No. How did you meet my daughter? If you must know, we met on a train. When? Yesterday. When did you see her last? About eight hours ago. How, how was she? Fine. Except for one thing. She's terrified of you. What did you do to her? No. She's not afraid of me. I'm certainly not going to take your word. Oh, I, I don't doubt that she told you that she was afraid of me. I don't even doubt that she believes it. What's that supposed to you mean? You don't know. I don't know what. What are you trying to say? You are in love with her. Heaven help you. Look, what is this? My, my boy, look. Look, look. look at that oil painting on the wall. All right. So it's Carolyn. No, it's her mother. Carolyn was only a child when that painting was done. My wife was a beautiful woman. But two years after she sat for that painting, you wouldn't have known her. She was an old woman. An old woman who cringed in corners. Mr. Bishop, you probably have some reason for telling me all this. I do, but... believe me. You see, Carolyn's mother died in a, in a mental institution. What? When Carolyn was six years old, she began to show the same symptoms. No. Oh, no, I won't believe it. You're lying. Look, I spoke with her for hours. She was intelligent. Her, her reactions were completely normal. I know. That's what makes it so cruel. Every now and then she has periods of clarity. Sometimes they last for as long as two days, but never longer. She always reverts, always becomes a child again. Now, it isn't true. I'm sorry. I won't let it be true. There's nothing that can be done about it. Well, there are doctors... Oh, no, I've had her examined by the best specialists in the world. There's no hope. My boy, look, look, look at me. You call me an old man. I, I'm only... Forty-five. Look into my eyes. How much suffering do you see there? You've loved her since yesterday. I've loved her for almost half my life. Caroline. You must believe me. But she said she was afraid of you. No, no, she, she doesn't really know what she's afraid of. But I, I do. I know what happens each time she reverts back. I've seen it so many times. If she's in a strange place, she knows nothing but... But stark terror, Mr. Tanner. Oh, you can't let that happen. Not if you love her. Caroline, dear. This gentleman has come to see you. Oh. Hello, Caroline. Good morning, sir. Do you like my garden? Yes, it's very lovely. I'd give you a flower, but when you cut them, they die. I'm sure you wouldn't want that to happen. No, I wouldn't. You can pick out a favorite, and I'll keep it for you. Um, would you like to walk with me through the garden? I'm sorry. I really must be going. Goodbye, Caroline. Goodbye, sir. Oh, my. It's so strange. Mm, what is, darling? That gentleman's face, I remember it. Almost as if I saw him in a dream. Yes, darling. He 
You saw him in a dream. Presented The Captive Spirit, written by Don Herring and directed by Warren Somerville. In the cast, Paul McGrath, Joan Loring, Ian Martin, Stan Watt, and Yafet Cotto. Audio engineer, Marty Folia. Sound technician, Terry Ross. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York, 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.